Hey, everybody. Uh, morning. Welcome. I'm Chris. Uh, I'm the CEO at NS1. And, and if you don't know NS1, um, well, we're a provider of Critical Path DNS and traffic management tech and services for some of the biggest properties in the world. And for the purposes of this very short talk, what that means is we don't get to make big mistakes. Um, but still, we need to move really quickly in developing our technology. We're a growing business. There's evolving demands in our technology. We want to solve big new problems for our customers. There's a rapidly shifting threat environment you all just heard about from Laurent. So I'm just going to take a couple minutes today to talk about some very basic things that we have learned over the last few years about how to keep moving fast in iterating on our technology without breaking everything. So I'm going to start with a very contrived example. Imagine you're at the red dot, and you're trying to go to the yellow star. Uh, and you don't have a map. You don't have a compass. The only thing you've got with you is a GPS unit. It's kind of a crappy one. So imagine a case where it's really expensive or risky for some reason to make use of your GPS unit. Maybe it takes a lot of time to get a fix on your location, or you have very limited battery life, or if you stop too long to get a fix, you get eaten by a bear, something like that. You think you're heading in roughly the right direction. And so the question then is, how often can you stop and check your GPS location? If you go too far in the wrong direction, it's costly to make a course correction. So now you need to think about how do you balance the cost and the risk of using your GPS with making progress in the direction you're headed. So with an expensive to use GPS, you'll go quite a ways before you realize that you do need to make a course correction. You're headed in exa exactly the right direction. And you'll probably overcorrect or undercorrect. This will repeat for a while. Eventually, you get to where you're going, but this is a pretty inefficient way to get there because of the cost and the risk of making use of your GPS. So what if using your GPS was cheaper or less risky? Well, you'd probably use it more frequently. You'd probably follow a slightly more efficient path to your goal. And this is a super contrived example in our world, I think, of the analogy of like using your GPS is sort of like shipping a new iteration of your product or a new release of a big component or s service in your system. The direction you are headed or your plan needs to be tested against the real world often enough. And this is a basic idea we've all heard a thousand times about product iteration to find what we call product market fit. In other words, you don't want to build, 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 build without creating some kind of a real world feedback loop for your technology. If you do, then by the time you put your product in the market, you'll need to make some huge investment to course correct, because your plan probably wasn't right from the start. The product iterations at the core of most successful companies, but we don't often think about product iteration as a tool for risk management or introducing safety into our systems. One of the things we found at NS1 is that rapid iteration is a powerful tool for managing risk. OK, so, so iteration is about more than just finding product market fit. The way we think about this is that more granular iteration of our technology reduces the scope of the potential failures that we are introducing before we find those failures or uncover them. In other words, the quicker your code hits the real world, the faster you find the issues, and the fewer issues pile up in between each discovery. OK, so one of the most important lessons we've learned is to build our technology iteratively. And to do that, it becomes critical to make rapid iteration cheap, to reduce the costs and the risks of using our GPS. None of this is a surprise. There's a lot of straightforward ways that we can invest that enable us to move faster and break fewer things. In our own big distributed systems at NS1, we found that things like gradual rollouts of our code across our big global network, or well-considered functional and integration testing suites, or t-testing, or really understanding, that, understanding the narrowest possible sets of KPIs that we should be observing for anomalies and alerting upon. Those are all simple investments that we can make to be able to iterate more quickly, safely. One interesting thing that we think about is how do we decide how to make investments in those different areas? There's always more tests to write. There's always more metrics for us to gather, more automation for us to build around CICD. So sort of obviously, we need to focus our risk management efforts and investments where they matter the most. At NS1, one of the ways that we think about this is by looking at a couple factors across our systems and services. First, what does it cost us if a component fails? What does it cost our business in terms of SLA credits or goodwill or reputation or operational overhead and on and on? And also, how quickly is each component in our system changing, how rapidly we're developing on it. 
And it turns out that the cross product of these two factors, cost of failure and change velocity, informs where we should invest in testing and observability and otherwise mitigating risks so that we can iterate faster. Here's a really simple illustration um, of a system with a few components, different columns in these charts. Here, the second component, the teal one, is one that we really do not want to fail. There's a high cost of failure. Maybe it's something like, for us at NS1, our DNS systems or software. And you see it may not change quite as quickly as some of the other components in the system, but it's not like it's standing still or stagnant either. And so when you take the cross product of these things, we find that it's super important in that particular component to invest really aggressively in functional testing and monitoring and alerting and other risk mitigations in that particular area. This is a pretty intuitive idea. But for us, if you think about it, well, it might suck if you can't, for example, go sign up for a new account in our systems. Uh, that's a pretty low risk piece of our platform compared to what happens if our DNS systems fail. And if that happens, I end up not getting to hang out with all of you and, and, and having to go explain myself on CNBC and you know, knock on wood, that hasn't had to happen yet. So just recapping two big takeaways. Um, first, rapid iteration on technology is a way to manage risk, not just to find product market fit. And second, making investments in de-risking that faster iteration for a component or a system should really align with the quantity of the risk around a component. If any of this is interesting to you, um, we went through it super quickly. These guys, Shannon and James from our team, will be talking about how we rebuilt the highest risk piece of our platform, our DNS server, uh, from scratch tomorrow here at Velocity. So go um, see how some of these ideas get applied in practice in a, in a real mission-critical way. And that's it. Thanks, everybody.